Good morning and welcome back to another solo run video. Today we are doing a Squirtle only run in Pokemon Blue. And considering we've done the Charmander run, we've also done the Bulbasaur run right at the beginning of the channel. This is the last start of Pokemon we need to do a solo run with. I'm quite excited for this one because out of all of the Pokemon that you can get as starters in Gen 1, Squirtle was always my favourite. I was never a Charmander person, I was never really a Bulbasaur person. Squirtle was my Pokemon because I started off with Pokemon Blue. We're going to go over Conor McCall as our rival for today. Thank you for the subscriber. Um, and let's get on with the video. We always pick up our potion, switch our options to fast tech speed and battle animation off. And let's get started with the run. We don't even need to use a Game Shark to switch out the Pokemon because it's a start Pokemon, it's already there. And because it's Squirtle, we're going to go with the name Squad. Because <laughs> remember from the anime, Squirtle Squad? I always liked them episodes, they, they were my favourite ones. Which means the rival is going to take the Bulbasaur and we will start off this, this run. And to be fair, I do some pretty bad strategy. I go for three tail, four tail whips here, but I've already lost too much HP that the Bulbasaur is just going to outplay us here and we lose the initial fight, which is not a great start to the video really. Tackle and tail whip are really not our great, great isn't it really not a great combination of moves? Especially considering we are better special only just than our attack. And of course we want to get up a few levels before we even go against Brock because we can actually beat Brock at a very, very low level. We need to get to level 8 where we can learn Bubble and we can pretty much sweep his team very, very easily from there. But until we get to level 8 we have to just make do a Tackle and Tail Whip, it's kind of tedious. But once we get over to Brock it's going to be a very easy fight. Let's have a quick chat about the base stats. We have a f total of 318, so 318, 314 base stat total. And that's mostly put into the defense and the special. You know what? Looking at the base stats and the spread of it, Squirtle's actually not very good. <laughs> this is why, like, which is weird because it's the speedrunner's choice of Pokemon. But that's because they evolve it into Blastoise. That's the reason why they like it, because Blastoise is an absolute tank. But Squirtle, not so much. It really isn't a very good Pokemon. We get Water Gun level 15, which is going to be a great shout as well. But to be fair, we'll probably pick up the TM for it well before then in Mount Moon. Bubble, a few Bubbles takes out Brock, and we really don't have to worry about this fight whatsoever. We get up to level 12, and we can move on to Cerulean City. So... Cerulean City is actually going to be really difficult. We've, we are going to get resisted by um, Misty's Pokemon. It's a water type gym. So we're going to have to rely on the likes of Tackle. I should have really picked up Mega Punch in Mount Moon. We pick up our Rare Candy. Yeah, I really should have picked up um, Mega Punch. That was my first mistake of this video. And um, But because we don't have it, I'm going to go against the rival first. And he shouldn't be too difficult, but to be fair... He does start off with his Pidgeotto, who has Sand Attack and is quite powerful at this point in the game. So we'll, go to, we'll try Misty instead. We are level 19 going into this. And because we're a water type, her AI will say we're not going to use water type moves. We'll use Tackle. Meaning we can get a few Tail Whips in, then we can use Tackle to take down a Pokemon. But we do lose about half our HP before we even get to the Starmie. And the Starmie is a lot tankier, a lot more powerful, and we just don't deal out enough damage. So it's going to be worth our time to go through... Nugget Bridge, because at the end of Nugget Bridge we can find the TM for Dig when we go against the rocket and just past the house that he robbed. And we definitely want Dig because it's a 100, 100, power, 100 power move, 100% accuracy. Yeah, we definitely want this move starting off. We are going to just beat the rival on the Nugget Bridge because he decides to go for a move that doesn't damage us, and we can then move on and pick up Dig from the rocket. We also picked up Seismic Toss as well because I completely forgot that Squirtle can learn fighting type moves such as Submission, Counter and Seismic Toss. And Seismic Toss at this point in the game is actually pretty good. If you are quite high level, you're always dealing out the same amount of damage as your level, it's worth your, it's worth your time having Seismic Toss at this point in the game. But now we're level 26 after going through Nugget Bridge, I've gone against every single trainer. Yeah, we, we're going to easily sweep through Misty's team here and I'm quite annoyed at myself at how... how how um, high level we are at this point in the game. We do pick up Bubble Beam as well, which is a great move. We definitely want that move on our moveset, because it can be a lot better than, um, than Water Gun. 
and we can move on into the SSN. We can pick up Body Slam here, and you might be wondering, well, our attack is not very good, so why are you getting a load of physical moves? Well, Body Slam is one of my favourite Gen 1 moves, um, that 80 base, 85 base power, 100% accuracy, and the chance to paralyse, it's definitely a great move to have. But we really should try and focus a bit more into our special moves, just because our special is a little bit better. And when we get through to Sellers on, we can invest in some um, vitamins just to get our special up a bit more. Because special um, is not split in this generation, your, your special defense will be the exact same as your special attack. So it's it's worth it's going to be worth our time because water is special in Gen One. Um, actually, where is it? Let me just double check that because I I messed this up on the Goldeen video quite recently. And yes, water is definitely a special type move in Gen One to Three. So I made a few mistakes through the month of Retro Round where I was I was messing up on whether some moves were special, whether they were physical or not. A few of you guys pointed them out and yeah, definitely thank you for pointing them out. I'm still learning all of this and when I was doing so many moves, sorry, so many videos throughout the entire month, yeah, I, I definitely messed up quite a bit because I was just missing little bits of um, knowledge. I wasn't trying to promote misinformation, but yeah, it, it just happens when you try and do so many videos at once. I've talked through the entire search fight because when we have Dig on our moveset, it's quite an easy fight. I mean, we were very high leveled still. And we can move on to Celadon where we can sell a lot of the items we don't need. We can get rid of the Nugget and we can pick up a few Calciums because I do want to invest heavily into my special. Because we're going to get the likes of Hydro Pump, we are going to get the likes of Ice Beam and Blizzard. It's definitely going to be worth our time to, to invest in those. Ice is... <laughs> From the research I've done, Ice is definitely a special type move in Gen 1, so we can, we can invest into our special and we can move on to try and fight against Erika. But I'm really not sure we can actually do Erika very easily, because our speed is honestly our worst stat at 43. Meaning we don't outspeed a lot of things, and that means that this victory bell here is just going to one-shot us as soon as it gets a Razor Leaf out. There's nothing we could do there. Even at another try at level 36 now, we are really getting high in levels. We're seven levels above this victory bell and we are still losing to Razor Leaf. So instead we're gonna go against we're gonna go against Giovanni. We'll go try and progress the story on a little bit more. Because there's other gym leaders that will have a better matchup against, especially the likes of Koga. But we need to go back over to Lavender Tower first and beat the rival. Now we're nearly level 40 already at this point. I did not imagine I'd have to be this high level to even get through these mid, the midpoint in the game. But because of our level, it's actually a very, very easy fight. I cannot, I'm not gonna try and tell you it's not. Level 39, you will sweep this fight. But the level curve will balance out really, really quickly soon because next up, we can either go over to Saffron or we can go over to Koga at Fuchsia City. But I'm going to go over to Saffron first, generally because it's a quicker way to get through the game. You go through a Saffron after Lavender Tower. And we're level 42 going into this fight. And even at level 42, this is really quite difficult. And that comes down to Gyarados with Dragon Rage. Always has 40 base power. So we're going to push past the um, Cycling Road guy. And we're going to head over to Koga and get a bit more experience over at Fuchsia City. And progress the story a bit longer. We now have picked up Hydro Pump at level 42. Our, the best water type move you can get in Gen 1, albeit the, the fact that it has 80% um, accuracy. Still not the worst thing in the world, but we do have Dig, which can also take out a lot of Koga's poison types. And of course, when we go for Dig, he can use self-destruct and give us the quick win, meaning we get an easy badge, we can pick up Toxic, which we might use, I'm not too sure yet. Like, substitute Toxic strategies actually have worked for me in the past couple of videos. And then we go back against the rival. We get a lucky freeze against the Pidgeot. And next up is the Gyarados. Now as long as he doesn't use Hydro Pump. As long as he doesn't use Hydro Pump. We should be fine. We can sweep through the, the Growlithe. And we're onto the Alakazam. And this is where I feel like we've now got another problem to contend with. Alakazam is very powerful in its special. And we're not very invested in our attack stat. Which isn't great. And we're not really invested in our speed stat. So we're... We're starting to really struggle and we're nearly level 50 and we still can't beat um, rival Silvco. Like, 
we can't even outspeed that Alakazam when, nearly, when we're 14 levels above it. If we had not got a lucky freeze against the Venusaur here, we still would have lost. And we had just on the cusp of level 50 before even beating Giovanni and Silvco. Crazy. We're now level 50 at half HP going into this fight. And Giovanni for us is a very easy fight. We've got Hydro Pump for all of his rock and ground types. And yeah, it's just a, it's just a sweep. I'm not going to have much problem with him when it comes to the very final gym leader. But we also really need to go back to Erica and get, get her badge. So Ice Beam at level 50 still doesn't take out the Victory Bell. I'm not sure what is happening with my stats right now. But yeah, it just feels like I am not having the greatest luck with this run. <laughs> and Squirtle is really letting me down because I used to do solo runs with um, Squirtle when I was a kid. But I would evolve into Blastoise, so I never actually just went through with just a Squirtle before. It's the very first time I've ever done this. And I'm starting to realise that younger me was a lot more intelligent than what I, I am right now. <laughs> by trying to do it with just a Squirtle. Because Squirtle right now is performing worse than both Bulbasaur and Charmander at this point in the game. Especially with just the levels. When it comes to Sabrina, we have Dig for the Venomoth, we have Paralyzed going to the Alakazam. And unless we get some really good luck here, yeah, she went for Psy Wave twice, which means we took her first time win. Which, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's swim down to Cinnabar, let's get an easy badge from, from Blaine. And we can also pick up Blizzard in the Pokemon Mansion. Now Blaine will be a very easy fight. We'll just Hydro Pump our way through. We're at level 52 now, and we haven't even got over to Giovanni, the AF gym. Rapid Ash will go down. Oh, flipping heck. He goes he goes for really random retroactive portions. This his AI is very weirdly done. The Arcanine even tanks a hydro pump. This is how worried I am going into these final stages of the run. We pick up Fire Blast, which is pointless to us, and we can go against Giovanni. Now this should be genuinely the easiest matchup we have. But I went into this fight, and I didn't heal, so I didn't have any Hydro Pump PP to go on this other Pokemon. Had to rely on Blizzard, and yeah, after we've ran out of Blizzard PP, we had to rely on Dig. Either way, we still managed to get through this fight without much problem whatsoever. I just didn't plan this very well with my PP management, because both Hydro Pump and Blizzard have only got 5 PP, meaning pretty much after every fight that we need them, we're going to have to go back to a Poke Center and recover. I'm trying to do this entire run as well without using any badge boost whatsoever, so that's the reason why you're not seeing withdraw on the move set, which is the move that I used on both the Blastoise and the, the War Turtle runs. And you can see how much badge boosting makes a difference in this um, when you see the final time. The, when we go against the rival just before the Elite Four, his first couple of Pokemon are not really going to be a, that much of a problem. Gyarados, of course, is still going to be a bit of a problem, but we do get a clutch freeze on it. And then we can just body slam it down into the ground. Growlithe is next. Hydro Pump will take that out. And we're on to this scary Alakazam. Now, body slam needs to connect. We need to get paralysis on it. Otherwise, we cannot get through that Alakazam. So, yeah. This is a very tedious fight. And I had to go up to level 60 before it even became possible. I don't know what it is with these last um, couple of runs since the, since the new year came in. A lot of my Pokemon have to be a lot higher levels to beat the game. And I'm not too sure what is happening right now. It's really annoying considering I've been able to do the likes of Clefairy under level 60. But either way, Clefairy is a very overpowered Pokemon. It gets, it's gets it got a great typing in Gen 1. We can go and pick up the Rare Candy and Victory Road here. And we'll move on to the Elite Four. Now the Elite Four is going to be a bit of a mixed bag. We've got a decent moveset. We haven't got great stats, but Lorelei should not really be too much of a problem. Dig is not super effective. Pretty much what we want is to get this Dugong paralyzed, or really what we don't want it to do is use Growl on us, which is what it keeps doing after it keeps using rest. So we're losing a lot of PP very, very quickly. It keeps using super portions, and by the time we even take down this Dugong, we've ran out of body slams. We're moving into Dig. Yeah, we're going to have to reset this and rethink how we're going to go about this fight. So, we need to get these body slams in early. We need to get digs in early. And she goes to sleep, which means we can now use body slams. We haven't been growled, so our attack isn't lower. 
but she is just going to keep using rest whenever she gets into range of using it. She goes for a growl and misses, which means we can move on to the cloister and use hydro pump. Because cloister's special is quite low, using hydro pump is actually the best player to be using. And you might be wondering as well, surf is a great move in gen 1, why are you not using it? Pretty much, I wanted to try and use Hydro Pump and Blizzard in this one. We do get a lucky freeze against the Slowbro, where we can just start chipping away at it with other moves. Yeah, I probably should have talked Surf over Hydro Pump in all honesty, because the PP management would have been a lot stronger on my part. But this is what we've got to work with for the rest of the Elite Four. We get Paralysis on Lapras, meaning we can now start using Dig. And we get some really good luck here. So, Body Slam connects, she goes for a super potion, we then hit ourselves in confusion, and it just becomes a back and forth until we're on 1 HP, and we finally take down Lorelei. We are already at a high level, and we're now moving on to Bruno, which should be the easiest member of the Elite Four for us, because two of his Pokemon are very weak to Hydro Pump. So we can just Body Slam against the Hitmonchan, <laughs> and this is where I'm thinking, you know what, I really should be using other moves here, I'm, I'm paralysed. Hydro Pump is one shot in most of the Pokemon because we've invested into our special a lot more. So yeah, I really need to think about my strategy and maybe even get rid of Body Slam because we actually take a loss to Bruno with Squirtle. We are level 62 here. <laughs> and next, next time, I learn my lesson. We go for Hydro Pump the entire way through and we get the easiest win of the Elite Four. Matchamp even will go down to two Hydro Pumps, but we've run out of PP, so we have to switch to Blizzard. And yeah, I really need to get rid of Body Slam, but that chance of paralysis is just too enticing to get rid of. We move on to Agatha, and this is the whole reason why I've kept Dig for so long. It's the only super effective move we'll have against her, and it's physical as well, and she has got not got the greatest physical stat in defense. We still take a loss to the first Gengar, and that just... Well, Agatha is very, very trolly. It's She uses moves very randomly, so you can never predict what she's going to do. Either way, you just got to make sure you can take her out as, as quickly as possible. If you can outspeed her, that's even perfect. If you can freeze, that's perfect as well. But we aren't badge boosting. We are level 65. And only at level 65 does Dig take out the Haunter, which is not a great situation to be in, considering... Yeah, we've still got one more Gengar at level 60 to contend with. We're on 6 HP here. She goes for Confuse Ray and we take ourselves out. At the last second, Agatha trolls us again. But on our next attempt, we get a lucky critical dig. Blizzard doesn't connect. It does after one Confuse Ray. And we're starting... <laughs> yes, she used Haze, so we're not confused anymore. That's one thing I love about this fight. That Golbat will randomly use Haze. And if you've been confused or put to sleep, here's negates any status effects as well as any stat increases. So that's a perfect route for them to use on us, considering we want to be at our best for this. We don't want to be paralyzed. Moving to the Gengar, she does a lot of switching, which means we get a few free hits in. We are confused, so we're on 41 HP here, 11 HP. And I decide it, I've got to go for the Hail Mary Blizzard. We manage to get connect and we take the win against Agatha, meaning we're on to Lance. Now I'm worried for the Gyarados here because it's been very trolly with us in the rival fights. I'm going to have to go for Body Slam, we're going to have to get that Paralysis. We do get it on this connection and we take it down without any problem, which means we can then sweep the next couple of Pokemon with Blizzard. Ooh, Dragonair does not one shot with Blizzard. Fair enough, the Body Slam can then connect. And then we're going to use Hydro Pump on the Aerodactyl. And we're on 16 HP going into the Dragonite, which still tanks a Body Slam. And then he goes for a Hydro po Hyper Potion and then a Hyper Beam. Ah. Come on, we can do this. Level 68 this time. We've used the last of our rare candies. And if we can't beat the rival after this at level 68, I'm going to have to go out and train a bit more to be able to do this. So... Second verse same as the first, the fight goes pretty much the same, except we get to the Dragonite with more HP, and this time, just those three extra levels give us the damage range we need for Blizzard to connect and take us for the win, meaning we're onto the rival and the final fight of this game. First up is the Pidgeot, and we're going to go straight for a Blizzard. It's not a one-shot. He goes for Sky Attack, and that means we get the Body Slam in, meaning the Alakazam is up next. 
We do not have Mimic on our moveset here as well, and we're at 103 HP to take out the rest of his team. Rhydon actually does quite a good amount of damage, and we are just missing with Hydro Pump and Blizzard. So this is why I really should have been using the likes of Surf, because it's 100% accurate. Yeah. <laughs> there are definitely some pros and cons to using those more powerful moves, whereas you use the moves that are just next down on the tier for them. We had to go out, we had to go and train up, and at level 78, we get a chance where we actually have a chance to win here. And level 78, it's still a bit of a chore. We're down to 32 HP and we're onto the final Venusaur where we get a critical hit and we take the win. Level 78, okay, that is a very bad level to be able to do this, especially with a starter Pokemon. I'm not happy with this. But you got to think, we weren't badge boosting. We weren't um, using Mimic Recover. We, we weren't using strategies that would have made that a lot easier. And we finished at 5 hours and 8 minutes because we had to go back out and train a bit more. Meaning, out of the three starters that I have done runs with, Charmander has been the best. Yeah, that's not what I would have predicted when I first started doing these solo runs. I would have thought Squirtle would have been the best because Water is a very good typing in Gen 1, but yeah. Charmander on my runs has been the best starter Pokemon, and I am very surprised by that. Either way, let's see what we get next on the wheel. First up is Psyduck, and I am not ready for a Psyduck run yet. We've done a Golduck run recently. What's next? Second up is Persian. Ooh, Persian could be a great shout. I really enjoyed the Meowth run. Um, it's a very, very quick Pokemon, so we can utilize speed and critical hits. Third up is... God's sake. I'm going to do this to myself, aren't I? Yep. We're going to go with Zubat. It's the hardest port. That's going to be the hardest run out of the three. Let's do it. Next up is going to be Zubat. If you got to this point in the video, please like, subscribe, share. You know, all that YouTube stuff. And I've heard it really helps the algorithm, you legends. And we will see you next week with a Zubat run. Take care.